Okay, back now. Um, we're going to be able to start to go a lot faster now because there are fewer variants to have to say much about. Okay, we're now at syllable, t syllable uh, 420. We're at verse 11. We're still in the section where Christ is saying, don't worry about what you're going to say beforehand. You don't need to rehearse it. The Holy Spirit's going to speak through you. And that's what all this says. Now watch. See how cute this is. But, whatever you're going to be given in that hour, don't try to even figure it out. Just don't worry about it. God will give you the words when you get under fire by somebody trying to persecute you because you're a believer. Okay? Notice that the total here is 420. Now there's no difference in the text in any of the variants I could find with the thousands of manuscripts that are in the CNTTS apparatus that's in Bible Works 9. See, there's Bible Works 9. Let me show you. Alright, wait a minute. Uh, how do I clear that? This is Bible Works 9. I want to show you where I'm getting all this stuff I'm showing you with the brackets from. It's right here. Alright, like this is 1 Peter. Let's go to Mark 13. This is why I'm a big avid um, uh, proponent of Bible Works. See this little tiny print here? This is the work of millions of people over the centuries. You see all these little, these little links? It took thousands upon thousands upon thousands of hours to create these. Each one of these little links is the name of a manuscript that somebody actually copied for the Bible hundreds of years ago or more. See, this is Psi. This is Theta. They have names that are signified by symbols or by numbers. Okay? And like, 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 let's see, here we go. This, these are the papyri. They have numbers and names. All right. And see that, that thing there, the, the, the funky looking N? That's Codex Aleph Sinaiticus. And this is Vaticanus. And then this one here is Biza that I've been praising so much. You have to learn all that. So see, you can click it. And then see, it tells you, see, Codex Biza. Alright, and it tells you when it was 5th century. Okay. Now what they do here is like, see, here's the text that every all the scholars accept pretty universally. But not all the Bibles we got say that. Some of them disagree. So like, instead of saying Kai and Hotan, when, some say Hotan de. Has the same meaning. But it's got this extra nuance of, versus what I was saying before, or to go on to the next point. So de has a slightly different meaning than Kai, but in English, it's pretty much the same. But these guys spent thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon hundreds of thousands of hours collecting every time one of the 26,000 manuscripts we have said Hotan de versus Kai Hotan. Okay, so these are all the manuscripts that we know of that have them. And then they categorize them by Roman numeral 1, mean, meaning that's generally regarded as more reliable. Or no category. Well, we're not really sure. And then each one is painstakingly listed. And then this is when the, the material on which they were written, how old it is. Because you can't, the words themselves are actually first century. Okay? So the best, best you can date them is to know how old the, the vellum the calf skin is, or how old the papyrus is, or whatever it is it's written on. See, and that's the Masoretic, I mean the majority text, Byzantine, and that's TR, and that stands for the Greek text that was used to make the King James Bible. See all this? Do you know how many thousands of hours 
were required just so that you could see what's on screen. And for hundreds upon hundreds of years, people didn't have this. They had no proof at all that what was told to them about the Bible really even existed. That's how important this stuff is. Alright? So, that's how I know to be able to say all these changes, see? This stuff. Like this. Do we count that or not? That's one of these things showing up differently than the rest of them. See? Here's the common text that everybody says, yeah, this is, just, this is as close to the autograph as we know we got. And then here's all the little differences. Sometimes it's just spelling. A lot of times it's just spelling. Okay? That's it. It's like saying, do you have a white cat or do you have a milk white cat? Those are the kinds of differences that we have in the Bible texts. They're not big. However, when it comes to counting syllables, it makes a big difference. Because, for example, nobody has different syllable counts here. So don't worry about what you're going to say. The Holy Spirit will be speaking through you. See right here. Now look. This is a verse. This is a, a clause about the Holy Spirit. So mark syllable syllabified it at 9. Do you get the Trinity haha -ha meter? 20 or 10 in Greek, even among pagan Greek, is a sort of hero meter. So here you are. If you don't worry what you're going to say, you're going to become the hero of the hour because the Holy Spirit, C9, will empower you. You see how meaningful these meters are? And then again, see, 15. And look at this. And brother will deliver brother over to death. Thanaton actually means the separation of the soul from the body. That's their trinity. See how, see how clever this is? They're going to do it for a prophet. Five is the number of prophet. And they're going to do it against each other to make a prophet. Their false trinity. You see? And then fathers will deliver over their kids. See? Five. To make a profit. And they'll betray. The, the parent. Well, the kids will betray their parents. Is actually what that is. And that's their profit. See? 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 It's got satire here. You don't worry about it because the Holy Spirit will never betray you. He's a real trinity. But people put up their fake trinities all the time. What are the fake trinities? Family, which is really shameful to have to say this. Family, politics, and religion. Everybody puts those things in front of God. Everybody uses those things to get something out of everybody else. Fake trinity versus true trinity. See how cute this meter is, how helpful it is? It's a Bible class all of its own. And then, of course, you know. And they will be delivered over to death. Yeah, because he's speaking to Jews. Which is really funny here because 480 was the 480th year that the first temple started to be built. That's 1 Kings 6 1. The number in 1 Kings 6 1. Go look it up hysterical that he would put that there all right and then here we go and you're going to be hated all over the world for my name's sake 19 19 is a prime number here matthew uses all uh, mark uses all this because matthew 24 15 has the exact same syllable count so he's tagging it's like cross-reference Instead of a footnote, he makes sure that his meter equals the same as the verse he wants you to go look at because he knows your memories memorizing by syllable counts. And as soon as I counted these syllables, I thought, oh my God, he wants me to go look at, Ma at Matthew 4.99 syllables. And I couldn't remember what verse it was. I had to look the verse up. But I remembered, I remembered what 4.99 was. You know what 4.99 is in Matthew 24.15? Let the reader understand. 
I immediately knew that because of the syllable counts. Much faster and easier than having to remember verse numbers. Okay? So, you see, the syllable counts really matter. So now we come to a reference to Daniel the prophet, which is in Matthew. It's just before the 499. Okay? In fact, the syllable 490 ends with this very phrase. Alright? That is spoken of through Daniel, through Daniel the prophet, although Christ used more words than that. So why do I know it doesn't belong in Mark? Why wouldn't Mark be reminding them of the same phrase? Now, this shouldn't be too hard to understand. Jerusalem is surrounded by armies when Mark writes. If they can't tell that the abomination is in front of them, that phrase means abomination that desolates. If they can't look out their window, and see all those Roman troops and Herod's own troops coming alongside, then it don't matter what Daniel said. They're too late. It's like a Trump voter. Trump voters never do their homework. They never looked up anything about Trump. They just believed everything he said. So if the evidence highlighted here in black in front of your face doesn't tell you then it don't matter what's in an old book from thousands of years ago. See the point? So look, that's what the text says. When you see. Now, Mark makes play on words of seeing. See, when you see. Up here, see to it. They don't ever translate it right in English. See to it. Sign. Believe it when I tell you. There's your sign. Do you see? See? See, he keeps using words of seeing. Good writers do that. I mean, you talk to anybody about how Shakespeare writes his stuff. He, he, he makes some particular character constantly use similar verbs. All right, see? Sign. See? There's another word for sign. See? See? You see how common it is? Okay, so this can't be too hard. When you see the abomination that causes desolation, yeah. You got all these Jews arguing in the temple, locking themselves up in the temple. As he writes, everybody knows that's been going on for two years. Josephus himself was a general, okay, who got captured because they broke through, you know, Masada. All right, and then they got back again, but he was, he got captured. When you see the abomination that causes desolation. Well, how can you not see it when you look out your window? Anybody within a 400 mile radius of Jerusalem would know all about those thousands upon thousands of Roman troops who were there ever since 66 AD when Nero, when he was still alive, dispatched Vespasian. Nero was in Greece and he said to Vespasian, who was a little bit north of him, Hey, I want you going down to Jerusalem. I know it's the armpit of the world, and you hate my, me, and I hate you. We, our parents and our families both hate each other, but just go do this, okay? Vespasian went down there. That was 66 AD. This is 69, three years later. Honey, if after three years you can't see what an abomination is, it don't matter what Daniel said. So Mark didn't write this. To omit it would be very pointed. Because he's using the same terminology Matthew used. Where this followed next in Matthew. But Mark's going to leave it out because it's like, honey, if you don't see it by now, it's too late. Alright? Now we're going to go a little bit faster. Okay. Everybody in, everybody in Ju Judea better flee. Yeah, well, you should have done it already. But if you're stupid and you're just looking out your window now... 
Get out of touch! Okay, so the one on his house. They lived on tops of their houses because it was cooler. Don't go down into the house. Just jump from the roof. They had little ladders, kind of like you've seen in the Pueblos in the southwest. They had ladders that were up against their houses. Just get get on the ladder and get out. Don't even get inside your house to pick up anything. Okay, so if you're saying domatos here, meaning your house, you don't need to repeat it here. So this isn't what Mark wrote. When you're in a hurry, you don't repeat what you just said a few s syllables prior. Okay? You don't need hoda. There's no transition here. He's saying, then get out and go to the mountain. The one on the top of his house. Don't even go down into the house. You don't need to say into the house here. Because he's saying, don't even go down. I mean, how many times have you been in a hurry and you talk to somebody and they said, well, do you want blah, blah, blah? No, don't go in. No, never mind. You don't even tell them. You just use as few words as possible because you're in a hurry. Okay? And besides, right in here, it says, don't go in to get anything. So you don't need this. So Mark then write it. Alright? Same thing here. The one in the field. Okay, it's already telling you that the one is in the field. You don't need this. There. It's just, it's just like superfluous. It, it's just like fast. The one in the field. Boom. I don't need to say, the one who is being in the field. No, it's a hurry. The one in the field, get out. Don't even stop to take anything. Not even your cloak. The cloak was that, you remember in those Bible movies, they got these big long robes that they wear on the outside while they're walking. That's a hemation. Okay. Sometimes I use the same term for an inner, like your inner underwear, but it's supposed to be for the outerwear. Okay, don't even, don't even grab anything, just run. Leave. Yeah, because Jerusalem's surrounded by armies, dummy. You should have left a long time ago. All right, and then here we go again, and and pray that it won't be in winter. I don't need these words. Your flight, Matthew already said that. I don't need to repeat them. We're talking hurry now, cause the troops are there now. When Matthew wrote, the troops were nowhere to be seen, as far as trying to take over Jerusalem. Okay? And there will be a time of, you know, flipses. Tribulation. Okay. So then we go to the next thing. Okay. And had the Lord not cut those days short. Cut the days short. I don't need the word those repeated. We're in a hurry, okay? So Mark didn't write that. He writes that word a lot, but not there. Okay? And then here's another one. Oh, this is my favorite. And then if somebody says to you... Now remember, this is Mark repeating what Ma what they already know from Matthew. Look! Here's the Christ! Look! There! Don't believe him. I don't need the or here. See, it's not, look, here's the Christ. Look, there. Don't believe him. That's much more dramatic, faster, and much more like the way Mark writes. I don't need this. Or, he's going to say the Christ is here. Or, that he's there. The Scarlet Pimpernel is everywhere. No, that isn't the way Mark is writing. It's like, bam, 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 bam. Mark didn't put that there. So I crossed it out. All right, now here's the next one. And see to it yourselves. I told you in advance. Okay, so if this says see to it, then I don't need behold. 
See to it, behold, that doesn't work in Greek and it doesn't work in English either. So, Mark didn't write, behold, there. He writes it, but not here. Okay? And then, let's see, we don't have too many more of them after that now. Oh, here's one. Oh, this is important. Oh, you're so tired, you're writing line after line after line. And, and then he will send the angels. Okay. Is there any doubt in your mind whose angels they are? And then he will send the angels. Wh whose angels is he sending? Is there any doubt in your mind as to whose angels they are? No. Okay, so then I don't need his. And then he will send the angels. His. I don't need that there. I don't need it. So Mark didn't write it. Okay, now watch. And then they, the angels, will collect the elect. Okay, but now I do need whose. Who's elect? My elect? Your elect? The angels elect? His elect. You see the difference? But if you're tired and you're writing at 3 o'clock in the morning and you've had to write the same words over and over, you might have put his on this line as well as on this line and then you didn't bother to check what you did the next morning for 2,000 years. See? You don't need to say it twice. And if you really wanted to make sure we all understood that they were his angels, in Greek, if you put it at the end, it means everything that went before. Ding. It's like one and two and three is the total. Okay, if I say total, then I obviously am including one and two. Same kind of idea. All right. And from the four corners of the world, he will gather them. Four corners of heaven. Now what I want to know, and I don't have an answer to this, is why is Mark picking, so you have to add 30, that's 1001 AD, why is he picking that year to say that this is going to be a gathering? It, 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 it's a metaphorical expression for scripture coming to everybody, and yeah, there were everybody was migrating toward Europe during those days up from the south from the east from the west from the north down so that's like gathering from the four winds okay but that year I don't know 1001 why that year what was so important about that year I know about other years that are near it but that one I don't know okay now here's the kicker learn the parable of the fig tree in Matthew, this is at 1050 syllables. So why is Mark putting it at 985? There's a difference of 65 syllables. Why? I don't know the answer to that either. But he's quoting Matthew here. Both Mark, I mean both Matthew and Luke put that parable about the fig tree at syllable 1050. Luke does it sort of indirectly. Matthew does it directly. Because Israel always ends the 1050. There's always some big deal going on about Israel every 1050 years. Like right now, because we're nearing our 1050. The 1050 for us, post-cross, is 2130 AD. And there's always 120 years set up. Just like the flood. Okay. Well, we're in our 1050. It'd be kind of nice to know what he's talking about here. I don't know how he's relating it. But he's basically saying 1015 AD rather than 1050. And I don't know why. I'll have to find out. Okay. Now, this is a big thing I want to show you. See this? Amen lego humin hoti. Remember seeing that before? See what the total syllable count is? It's 1078. 
it equals 1050 plus 28. You know what the syllable count is? Isaiah 53's total syllable count. To count the number of years from the birth of the first David to the death of the last David that was then scheduled. And here's that same last David saying, I'm in Lego home in Haughty. Now watch, that's 1078. Remember up here I said Biza's right? Yeah, and what's the syllable count at its start? 63. Oh, that's divisible by 7. Yeah, it's also, get this, also 1015. Why? I don't know. But it's divisible by 7, and that's exactly, exactly, exactly the way the syllable count works in Matthew. Now the scribes, the copyists, the Catholics, the Calvinists, and every Christian denomination on earth, unless they've seen my videos, they don't know about this sevening differential. They don't even know about the syllable counting. So guess what? This is at 1078. Mark wrote it that way. And this is way up here at 63. Mark wrote it that way. And I don't care if Beza's the only guy who's got a copy of it in Greek. It's right. It's Mark. It's real. Isn't this cool? I'm just so flabbergasted by this I could die. Alright? Now, I'm not going to go through much of the rest of it just real quickly. Um, again, you don't need the definite article in front of Horace there because you got this thing here. So, I put it there. I mean, I accepted it, but it really is kind of like you could take it or leave it. But, it creates a trinity meter that sevens. So, it must have been meant by Mark. Okay? Well, most of your scholars accept that that definite article belongs there. It's talking about, no, you know, the specific idea of, you don't know the day or hour. It's a f common phrase, so in Greek you stick the definite article in. But it's Trinity meter. See, and of course the Trinity is mentioned next. Not the angel, well actually just two members of the Trinity. Not the angels in heaven, nor the Son, because at that, that time he hadn't risen, but only the Father. So you see, that relates to Trinity. So that I left in. But the scholars will tell you it should be there anyhow. Okay, fine. By contrast, this definite article? Not, okay, none of the angels. Okay, you just said the word the here. You don't need to say it again. So that's the story of a scribe being so tired he just put it in the wrong place. He had already typed, written it here, and he forgot, and he wrote it here. Okay. The same thing here. They stuck in a couple of extra words. It's like, w w were you drunk? Were you tired? All right. The same thing here. Drunk, tired. So I say, no, that didn't happen. Now, I want you to see something so you get a really good appreciation for this Bible. There's something unique to Bible works also. Do you see Greek up here? Okay, but that's not what the scribes wrote. Look at this. See that? Let's see if I can get it to go bigger. I can only show so much of it. I don't want to violate the copyright of this thing. Okay, look at this. That's what the scribes were writing. Wouldn't you get tired and put a letter in the wrong place? Look, it's just, it's just one big block of text. Seeing these little notes on the outside or somebody saying, hi, I looked at it, I corrected it. Can you tell? This is Mark, this is Mark 13.3, 13.4, 13, 13.5. Does that look too, this is actually one of the better ones, one of the easier ones to read. This is Bezos. But look at this. All the word, all the letters are running together. It doesn't matter. There are no accent marks. No separation between the letters, blah, 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 blah. And the letters don't even look remotely the same like these things that look like C's. Those are S's. 
okay and these things that look like A's sometimes they're A's and sometimes they're not okay and these things that look like like H they're not H and like see this word here this is the word tuyeru oh but it looks like a Y yeah isn't a Y supposed to be a G in Greek? Well, not in the script. It's not. And it even gets worse. See, that's cyanidic. See how thin it is? It's like, well, how can I tell that the letters I'm reading, did somebody write over it? See, it's backwards here. Hagius. Is that Hagius? Well, I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to flip it over and see. See? I mean, look at this. Give you bigger. See? Look. Lepite. And if you had to write that, look at that. All they all they cared about was getting a nice pretty column. And you could you split the word in the middle. Okay? See, this is agosin. It's a question of whether it's agagosin. This is Sinaiticus and it's just Agosin. Okay, but how do you get used to seeing that? And seeing then this is this is the next the next word, but it's split in the middle of the word? This is crazy. If I had to read like this, I'd go blind in five days. Imagine being a copyist and having to do this. So you can see why they'd make a mistake and put uh, an article in the wrong place twice, see? It looks real clean and easy to know that it's in the wrong place here. But imagine that you're copying this. Oh, well, let's see. Oh, I need to get a coffee break. I have to go to the bathroom. Okay, did I stop on this line here? Or was I on this line here? Well, I think I was on this line here. So I'll just make the next letter and the next letter. And I don't even break for the words. The next letter, the next letter, the next letter. And oh, Kai. Is that where that Kai belongs? Maybe I should put it over here. You see? You're lucky to have a Bible. Thousands upon thousands of people spent their whole lives doing this. And so, you know what? As much as I like to fault them, they can be forgiven for sticking in a, a word in the wrong place. Don't you think? Peace out.